Welcome back everyone to part 2 of my 100 video special on YouTube, which is my review slash let's talk of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Maybe I don't have to separate this one into one more part, hopefully. Maybe this time I'll try to wrap it up. This time I'm actually going to talk about the characters of My Little Pony and what makes them all unique. Twilight Sparkle, the main character of the series, um, her... Her personality is pretty much she's always in love with stories and books and whatnot, but she also has incredible magic powers that always that always lets her to get through any situation no matter what. And with that, she uses her abilities to also find out what friendship truly means by going on different adventures and quests, no matter how bizarre the adventures are, and actually find out, you know, the true meaning of friendship, and always writes progress reports to Princess Celestria as her faithful apprentice. We also have Applejack, which I think is pretty much one of my closest favorites. Well, because she's pretty damn awesome. That Applejack is pretty much someone who's very competition-like, kind of like Rainbow Dash. But, in a way, pretty much like a fun competitor. Rainbow Dash kind of likes to show off once in a while. Let's just put it this way. Rainbow Dash is more like Sonic the Hedgehog, if, if Sonic, I guess, was female, and I guess Pegasi in some way. I, I guess you can you can kind of say she's like a female Pegasi like Sonic the Hedgehog and her speed oh my freaking god it's like whew. but anyways um Applejack is very fun rep um competitive and also a very hard working pony she also likes to she never really loses that much to challenges either because when she does she doesn't really kindly accept that but in the end she knows how to you know you know, she realizes that she's been defeated, you know, once in a while. But, and also, she also helps out her friends in need whenever, you know, they have a problem or they need help fighting a certain foe, like either Nightmare Moon, um, Discord, or that Changeling, or whatever she was in the f uh, season finale. Uh, so, yeah, so no matter what, Applejack will always be not only competitive, hardworking, but also a very awesome friend to Twilight and the other ponies in Ponyville. Next, we go to, as I mentioned before, Applejack, one of my favorite characters. Now, people are going to say, oh, just because she's like Sonic the Hedgehog. And damn straight, that's why. I'm sorry, but she is just very awesome. Like, she has to be one of my most favorite. Like, if there was a competition between Sonic the Hedgehog and Rainbow Dash, I'm going to have to say it could be one, a close tie, or two, it could be Rainbow Dash. Because... If you ever seen the Sonic Rainbow episode, which is one of my most favorites, I mean, I'll, you know, I'm going to name also a couple of most of my, my fewer, uh, greater episodes that I really liked. Um, you would see how incredible her velocity speed is, so, yeah. Um, I'm not going to spoil way too much about those episodes, but trust me, you'll have to watch it for yourself to actually see it. Um, it's an amazing episode, it's from the very first season, and if you've seen how incredibly fast, like, her record time is, it's... Man. Anyways, um, moving on to the cutest, and I would have to say the most shyest of all ponies, is Fluttershy. Now, Fluttershy is, well, that hints the name, shy, when technically she is shy. She's always not so shy when it comes to one, either some of her friends, or two, her lovely animal critters that she always cares for no matter what happens. But there are times where Fluttershy does step up and actually becomes more braver in certain episodes. Like in Season 2 where they need help to actually break the world to get the ultimate tornado to make it rain on Rainsville, which is some kind of cloud village, like <laughs> the cloud village, I'm thinking of Naruto. Um, it's some kind of cloud, it's like Townsville, but like it's like rain. I don't know, you have to watch the episode for yourself. And Rainbow Dash, you know, makes her, you know, confident to actually make her help. You know, if it wasn't for Rainbow Dash, actually, she wouldn't even have her cutie mark. In fact, she would not even have been, you know, into the wonderful place known as Critters and Creatures. Otherwise, she would just be, you know, a turtle hiding in her shell and never exposing out into the sunlight. So, it's a good thing she always has her place called her you know, her home full of magical creatures of critters, and also her friend, um, her best friend Rainbow Dash, and not to mention all of her friends in Ponyville to always back her up. And there are times where she could be, one, scary, or two, kind of disturbing in certain ways. And I'm not talking about the parody with the Shed movie, or 
Um, let's just say there's one episode and then another episode where Fluttershy, out of random, just doesn't really act like Fluttershy. It's kind of scary. <laughs> just to warn you. Next, we have Rarity, which is the most fashionable of all the ponies. She's always obsessed with fashion, and, she, and of course, diamonds and whatnot. She's kind of like, I guess, a little bit of Nami in some sense, how she's always obsessed with treasure. Same with her. She's always have a precious timing when it comes to diamonds and clothing and whatnot. When it comes to style, Rarity is always, oh, I hate using this corny line, always fabulous. Dear God, that sounded so gay. I will never do that shit ever again. But, Rarity's an okay character, but I find her broadly annoying at some times, and also a bit of a psychopath. Trust me. Uh, watch season 2, and you'll see her psychopath go insane. Trust me. She's also a little bit insane at some points, and you'll find out what I mean when you watch season 2. Yeah, be afraid. <laughs> and uh, finally, I guess out of the ponies, out of the most, out of the most, um, you know, characteristics of, of of the ponies of the main characters, the most cartoony I would have to say is Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie is the cartoony uh, pony of the bunch, with her pretty much breaking the fourth wall in many occasions on many episodes. You know, I'm pretty much not really afraid of everything, which I think is pretty amazing. Like, you know, if there's anything scary or creepy or just looks, you know, kind of, you know, ew or eerie, Pinkie Pie just like, yeah, I'm laughing at that. <laughs> you troll. <laughs> so, you know, Pinkie Pie is not only brave, but she also is, has, ve she's a very, very, very funny character. And... I think there's one reason why she's always so hyped up all the time and always a little bit, well, party crazy. It's gotta be the sugar. Of course, what was I thinking? It could either be sugar or <laughs> coke. But I really doubt it in this case. Pinkie Pie also works at a cupcake factory that she pretty much uses it to make a lovable bunch of cupcakes. And I can kind of see why she's always so hyped up and pimpy. All Pamped, I don't know how the fuck you, um, whatever. Let's just say that's why she's always so hyped up all the time and so pampy. I get pam there. We go. God, I always can never get that word. Anyways, so out of all the characters, out of the most hyper ballistic of all ponies, it's gotta be Pinkie Pie. But also, she's the most lovable because one, she loves to party, and two, she's always very hilarious. And she's kind of more like the Bugs Bunny of also the My Little Pony because she's always getting into these really dangerous situations. Yeah, she still has a good time with it. Also, finally, well, that's pretty much all I really gotta say, really. But there are some times, but remember, I will say this once, and I will only say this once, just for a warning. Don't ever break a pinky promise. Ever. Do not break it. I swear to God, you you will regret it if you ever, ever break a pinky promise. J just a warning, just a warning. If, if you do, just never break a pinky promise. Thank you. That's all I gotta say. And finally, out of the main cast, we go to Sp Spike. can kind of be a little bipolar at times, uh, not believing, not believing aliens, but also believing zombies and anything else that ponies always try to make rumors of, even though they're pretty much superstition. So, not only that, but also, he's pretty much the smartest out of all the ponies. It's like Spike always outsmarts them. Like, the time where Twilight Sparkle was, you know, worried over nothing in Season 2, where she was pretty much almost tardy, but not reporting a single no to Princess Celestria. When that happened, Spike was the smartest of all reason, and decided to tell Celestia all about it, and technically, she tried to play a little trick, saying that, you know, being all really pissed off, and actually thinking that she was really mad, but technically, she was just to teach Twilight a viable lesson, and also to teach the other ponies a lesson as well. That even though your friends may not seem like they have the most serious problems, you must always take them seriously no matter what, because, you know, hey, you never know what can happen. There can be consequences along the way, so, you know, that's a pretty good lesson to learn, actually, and, you know, I actually had that situation myself when I actually had to fix it. Even though it didn't seem that serious, I still fixed it, because, hey, he's, you know, he was my buddy, you know, I had to help him out, you know, even though it wasn't that serious of a problem, but, 
there were some emotional times with that, but I'm not really going to go into that. Anyways, so yeah, Spike is the cutest baby dragon ever that has the smartest of wisdom, but also can be very bipolar at some points. So yeah, I can go on and on about how many, many characters. Oh, I forgot to mention with Applejack. She also has a sister named Apple Bloom and Big Mac and uh, Sour Apples. Yeah, you can tell that there's a lot of food puns in the family when it comes to Applejack. And I mean a lot of food puns. So just be warned, there's a whole bunch of families of apples and oranges. And hey, aren't you glad I didn't say banana? <laughs> yeah, I was stupid. I know, I apologize. <laughs> so yeah, now that I explained most of the cast, which I'm not going to get in way too much. Like I said, some of my favorite episodes I mentioned was, of course, Sonic Rainboon. Uh, my other one would have to be, of course, all the beginning pilot episodes with Nightmare Moon. Um... My other favorite, of course, is when they also have to defeat Discord. Uh, the Gal, the season one finale, Night at the Gala. Uh, which one was another one of my favorite? Uh, the one where Pinkie Pie has to figure out, you know, mystery wise and whatnot. There's tons of great moments and tons of great, funny, hilarious, sad, and happy ending moments that make My Little Pony completely watchable as a great cartoon of this generation. It's like a fairy tale combined into ponies. Except that, well, Fairy Tale has kind of more violence in it. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. My Little Pony Friendship with Magic does have some pretty cool fight scenes. You know, I, I hate to bring this up again, but season two finale. Oh my god. A boss fight. It was a boss fight, man. Oh my god. Going down, man. Oh my god, it was going down. Look it up, man. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. And there are some fight scenes, especially when it comes to some of the main villains in the series, that are very fun to watch as well. And what's a beautiful and fluid animation. Uh, my only biggest problem, I would have to say, is that when it comes to the bronies, I will admit there are times where they kind of overforce you to join the herd, join the herd, when technically. Now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against bronies. I think bronies have a pretty good, smart community that knows how to work problems out. And even though it seems like the most worst of times may come, they'll always stick by no matter what happens. I also pretty much respect bronies. I respect their artistic values, and not to mention music. Uh, their music overall, I have to say, you know, come on, Living Tune stuff, Applejack the Mic, oh my god, there's tons of things I can name, tons of great music, tons of great remixes of certain songs and whatnot, uh, yeah, not to mention some pretty cool, funny parodies, some artistic parodies, um, some anime style openings, which I think are really good, in fact, I made one myself, based on the... Uh, Magical Madika um, anime, which it may not be great, but you know, it's a start. So, yeah, there's tons of great artistic vibe. The problem is, there are some overuses of bronies where it comes to um, flopping, or flop, um, flopping, yeah, flopping, or something like that. It's kind of similar to fapping, you know, kind of like, you know, masturbating, which is you know, to pony porn and whatnot and bestiality stuff. <laughs> Absolutely not. Now, that is something that gives kind of Bronies a bad name, and most of the Bronies of the community do not really approve of this. And I totally agree with them on that. There are some of them that do give them a bad name, but they actually force you to join so badly that they even... S well, <laughs> let's just put it this way. Like, they always... Give it a chance and just see how you can actually enjoy it and see why others may enjoy it as well. Or if not, that's cool. You know.